All right. Hello and good afternoon. We've just entered the afternoon time. So um, welcome. My name is Melissa Rapp. I'm the Associate Dean of Graduate Admissions at Goizueta Business School at Emory University. And we are here to talk about the Executive MBA program. And today with me, I have my colleague from admissions, Susan Mellage, who will be putting information in the chat. So if you don't have your chat window open, I would encourage you to do that. She'll be posting links. So if there's a topic that we touch on, she'll post a link and then you can find out more about it. You might get some emails in there. You never know what Susan's going to put in the chat. We also encourage you to use the chat to post your own questions so that this conversation can really hit on what's on your mind. We don't have any agenda for this session. We don't have any PowerPoints, which is really exciting because then you just get to listen to us talk about whatever you want to hear about. My other guest today is Jackie Connor, who is the program dean for the executive MBA program um, and someone that you will get to know very well during your time as a student here. Jackie is an amazing individual and cares a lot about all of her students. So you have a great resource here to talk about the program and um, how it can benefit you. Jackie, would you mind introducing yourself? Yes, thank you, Melissa and Susan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. Please excuse my casual attire. I literally just finished a walk and talk meeting with um, an individual who may actually be potentially applying to this program. And so I always encourage walk and talk meetings because you can accomplish multiple things at one time. But I definitely want to say welcome, and I look forward to the conversation and hopefully answering any questions that you may have. Great. So why don't we just get the room warmed up a little bit? Dave, thanks for having your camera on. We love seeing faces. If anybody else wants to turn their camera on, we'd love to see you as well. But we also understand you might be in a place and space where that's not possible. We're very green here at Goizueta, so if I don't move around enough in my office, the lights go out. Um, so that's what just happened. Anywho, Jackie, let's talk about the three, because it goes what I think is unique in that we have one executive MBA program, but three different delivery formats. Would you mind talking about some of the differences in those delivery formats for us? Yes. Yeah, so as you said, it's one executive MBA, but our students are able to make a decision about really what is the best learning and delivery format for them to have the best balance of work, life, and learning, as I like to say. And so we have an on-campus option, and those students come to classes every other weekend. Classes are typically Friday nights starting at 5 p.m. and then all day on Saturday. And then we have another option, which is our hybrid option, Hybrid students come to campus only three times a semester. And the way that works is they will come for the first weekend, the middle, and then the end of the semester. And then all of their uh, other coursework is taking place online, typically during the week. And those classes are 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. at night. And then the other option we have is our fully online version. And so for the fully online version, uh, students have all of their classes 100% online. And those class times generally are during the week, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then those is, that's pretty much the format for our core classes. And then I always like to share, once we get into elective classes, sometimes the schedule can get um, changed up a little bit. But depending upon whatever format you've decided, whether it's on campus, hybrid, or online, that is uh, what is the expectations as far as your participation in a class. But all of our classes are designed for very busy working professionals that have demanding lives. And while I'm on that particular topic, I will share that our faculty have been teaching in our executive MBA program for many, many years. And so they are very understanding when it comes to the lives and demands of our working professional students. So we're very equipped and, and capable of catering to this specific audience. Oh, you're on mute, Melissa, sorry. 
you talked about these different formats and I love that we're able to kind of meet needs of people who maybe travel a lot or aren't located physically close to Atlanta. Um, how do you develop a rapport across those different delivery formats? Am I really going to have a cohort of everybody or is it really, are we siloed kind of in our delivery models? Yes. Yeah, so definitely there are times and opportunities where all of the students across uh, delivery formats are brought together. And that's very intentional because um, we're very passionate about building community and embracing our community. Once you join Gazweta, I always like to say that you join a family. <laughs> so we have those opportunities where we all come together. Um, and so one thing actually I should have said um, when talking about the different formats is when you choose your format, it really is based upon convenience for you. All of the formats have the exact same faculty members, exact same classes, exact same content. So you should really look at what is gonna be best for my balancing. But what we do is we have all of our formats come together for orientation or we call it onboarding. And that's at the beginning of the school year in August. And we have an amazing time getting to know each other. It's a three-day um, weekend activity. And so we start out by getting to know each other. We have some time where you meet different faculty members and you understand what is it like to now be back in school? Because let's be honest, for many of you, it's been a while and you need to adjust and understand what that actually means again. Um, and then we spend time going to what's called our leaders reaction course. And this is down in Fort Benning, Georgia. We get up very early Sunday morning, get on the bus, and then we actually go through what's called the leaders reaction course. It's the physical obstacle course. And it allows our students to engage in team building, bonding, but then also learn strategic components of how to build um, a highly performing team how to know when you need to be a leader, but sometimes we need to learn also to be better followers. And so it's a great experience that we have for community building. And then throughout the program, there are many other um, touch points, and I'll talk about those later in the coffee chat, but where we all come together and um, participate, sometimes it's in person, sometimes it's online, sometimes it's hybrid. So we have, thankfully, the technological capabilities to make sure that we're having those communal opportunities, but also meeting the needs that people are gonna be geographically dispersed. I think that's really helpful to hear. And I, I've, I, I was a doubter when we first launched the online program that we would be able to build a community. I, I knew Jackie had a big job ahead of her. And I will say, I, we keep in touch with our students. And I think they have all been so impressed with the way the community is able to engage um, and that they really do feel like they're a part of the cohort. Jackie, can you talk a little bit about the global classrooms and what that means to us as an institution and what it means for our students? Yes, so we are beyond excited that we have these state-of-the-art global classrooms inside our buildings. And if you haven't ever seen them, uh, perhaps we have some pictures online where you can take a peek or I uh, highly encourage you to visit a class and uh, participate in the global classrooms that way. But these rooms make it where it's not Zoom school. And I know so many of us have been on Zoom forever and ever, and there are a lot of limitations when it comes to having an educational experience when you're in Zoom. In the global classrooms, all of our students' images are showcased on a large wall. And so our professors are able to come into the global classroom, actually go back to their more traditional styles of teaching, where they're standing, they're not seated at a seat, they can actually move around, have various gestures, and then have access to amazing technologies that allow them to show videos, show different software, show uh, imagery, but then also be able to do the more traditional activities such as putting students in breakout groups, um, having different polls and voting within the classroom. And we really feel that these global classrooms uh, provide a very unique learning opportunity for our students to have the highest level of engagement. So highly encouraged that you take a look at those. 
Yeah, and we do offer some class visits that are virtual where you can experience that global classroom um, experience. And it really is, I know, like we're here on Zoom and I think Zoom is great for some things, but the global classroom, you really do feel like you're in the room and you can change your view. So it's kind of 360. It's it's really, it's it's a lot of fun to be, to participate in a class in there. Um, so since we're kind of on the topic of classes, Jackie, can you explain the progression in academics and what kinds of um, classes candidates or students are taking and then how that builds into electives? Yes. So during your first semester, as well as your second semester, that is when you will be taking all of your core classes. So we will be covering accounting, strategy, leadership, finance, um, marketing, data and decision analysis. So that gives you your, your groundwork foundational components. So then we can now have those building blocks to then grow a little bit deeper and more. And even though those are your core classes, trust me, you're going to find all of those subject matters highly exciting. We have our accounting professor who's amazing and everyone says, I never thought accounting could be this fun if you're not in the accounting space. So our faculty members really do a great job in making sure that they're providing applicable information. And we always say, whatever you learn in class, either at 10 o'clock that night or on that Friday or Saturday, it needs to be applicable the very next day when you go back to work. And so that will definitely take place in um, your core classes. Once you get past the core classes, so we're now into our third semester and then on into the fourth and fifth, that's when you have the opportunity to take electives. And so our electives cover a variety of ranges. We have classes in healthcare, uh, advanced finance, corporate finance, mergers and acquisitions, negotiations, uh, a wide variety of different electives you can choose from. And when we get into the electives, that's when all the formats get to be blended and in class together. So you may be a fully online student, but you're in class with a student who's in the on-campus um, format. And the way we're able to do that is in addition to having a global classroom where everyone is on the wall, we also have what's called our hybrid classroom where we have students physically in person and then students on the wall who are online. So again, a lot of flexibility, a lot of choices, but once you get into your electives, you really start to customize your um, degree experience. And many of the students that come to our program are looking not only for knowledge and networks, but you're also looking perhaps to pivot in your career. So maybe this means um, you've been working in an organization for many years and you haven't gotten some of the opportunities you've been hoping for, and this will help give you um, some key information to make that adjustment. Or you may be um, at your, in your journey in life where you're saying, I really would like to transition industries. I have transferable knowledge and skills, but now I'd like to try this in another area. And that really, uh, in your electives, allows you to get that additional knowledge so now you can take that piece of information, use that in the conversations that you're having with individuals to say, here's my ultimate goal where I'm trying to ultimately get in my career, but now I have the knowledge base to be able to do that effectively. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that knowledge is one thing that our students come into the program looking for, and I definitely think you gave a good description of you know, how this knowledge can help you either accelerate or pivot your career. And that, you know, I think we should all aspire to be lifelong learners. But the network, which you also mentioned in passing, is a big part of the MBA experience. Can you talk about the cohort in terms of who's in it? How do you develop that network? How does it extend into the alumni population? Yes, yeah, so the network is extremely, um, I like to say, positive and powerful. Uh, it's so important to utilize the network, and the network gets built be out of relationships. And what we often say with our students is that the job that you're really looking for, that next opportunity for where you are in your career, especially as an executive level student, you're not going to find this job on LinkedIn or on Indeed. This opportunity is going to happen because you've talked 
to the right person or the individuals who are in the at the table making this decision, they know your name or they've met with someone who has now referred you. That comes as a part of the networking. And um, our faculty members are well-versed in this area. Uh, we have some professors, I say, literally, how do they know all of these individuals? They know everyone. But it's networking takes place even when you're in class, even when you're having these conversations about business topics that you're studying, you're still in the process of networking because, again, you're building those relationships as you go. And those relationships will not only happen with your classmates, they happen with your program team and staff, your faculty, and then, of course, the larger um, Gazueta Business School community, which in includes all of our Alum. So it's a very, um, like I said, positive and powerful opportunity to be able to um, grow within and participate within because once you graduate, we have you for life and we never let you go, which is very important because, as I mentioned, we do take it seriously because you're joining this family. And so the network um, is a strong component of the program. And I, I, you know, I think we've talked about that network and the knowledge. And I think one of the other things we mentioned in passing was this, this concept of accelerating your career. And I think a lot of people think of this executive MBA as a little bit of a launch pad into the C-suite. And I think mm -hmm. Grace is unique in addressing that kind of level of goal. Can you talk a little bit about one of our favorite events that you host each year? Yes. So we have Pathway to the C-suite. And uh, it's almost coming up. It's actually for our current students going to be happening in February. So that's why I'm a little bit more excited than I have any other times of the year because it's literally right around the corner. But we have, this is one of our signature events. Um, it's called Pathway to the C-Suite where we invite C-level individuals to a moderated panel. It's moderated by our dean. And Literally, these individuals come and share their story. They're very open and honest about their journey to the C-suite. They talk about the pitfalls and areas that you should avoid. They'll talk about sacrifices and decisions that they made along the way. And it's a very um, eye-opening experience in that many of our students, if this is a, a career aspiration, it's very helpful to hear from individuals who have already walked that walk to have an understanding of how did you actually get into this particular position? What do you wish that you knew back then that you know now? Um, and so we have this event at a very nice hotel uh, in Atlanta. This year, we're gonna be at the Waldorf Astoria. And literally we invite all of the students. So the online students, hybrid, on-campus students. For the online students, if they're not able to be in person, it's live streamed. Um, but you're able to not only hear these stories, but then also ask questions. And before we have the moderated panel, we have a very nice reception where our students get to actually meet these individuals personally and build, again, connections and relationships to support that network. So we're very keen on that particular event. And uh, Melissa, is it okay if I talk about some of the other signature events? Yes, on this of topic? course, please. So in addition to Pathway to the C-Suite, we also have what's called Fun on the Green. And that takes place every October uh, where students come and actually invite family and friends to Gazueta. And so literally we have, again, all formats are welcome to come. But it's such a warming experience when we're able to not only spend this time with the students, but students are now able to meet each other's spouse, partner, sometimes parents, uh, kids, any neighbors. I mean, we've met all kinds of people at these types of events, but it's really um, a chance where we can come together and it's a big carnival that we have. And the reason we call it Fun on the Green is because we have an area called Patterson Green on campus. And it's just a great way, again, when it comes to not only building community, but also showing people in your personal circles, this is what I'm committed to, but then also to thank them because we recognize 
when you're going back to school, it's not just a personal decision. It also impacts the lives of the people closest to you. And so we want to make sure that those individuals also feel included in this experience and know that they can have support as well. So it's a great time for us to come together and really spend time as our because what a family. Yeah, I love both those events. And I I always find it interesting how after the pathway to the sweet sweet, there's always a couple of people who are like, maybe I don't actually want that. <laughs> maybe I'll just do something else instead. <laughs> um, we've talked a little bit about, I want to really emphasize Jackie. And again, if anyone has questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand or just let us know you have a question. We do definitely want to make sure we answer all of your questions. Um, when I think about our executive MBA students, I'm always so impressed because they are taking on this degree while they are working. And most of them are at a point in their lives where their jobs come with a lot of responsibility and they also have some family obligations or friend obligations. They're often very active in their communities. So what tips and tricks do you have for someone who's hesitant because they feel like I am already so busy where exactly am I going to fit this in? Yes. So um, the reality is people make it work. And what we always remind our students is that when you have the mindset of, gosh, how am I, how am I going to do this? Think of the thousands of people that have graduated before you and were able to figure this out and didn't lose their sanity. They actually walked away having a great experience in this great degree. You can do it too. And the reason um, I know our students are able to do it is because the program is built and designed for people in this very specific profile. So yes, classes are at night. Sometimes you're going to have them on the weekend. You're going to be meeting with your teams, but it's all designed and uh, crafted for you to be able to manage this while you're working. So time management obviously is very key. Figuring out what is the best day that you like to study? Um, how do you make sure that you have resources, I would say, in your personal life? And so sometimes we will even give advice to students of, here's a great caretaker or babysitter that you can call upon um, in, in a network. Here's another student that has a similar role or similar industry. Perhaps you should talk to that student and get some advice on how this individual was able to manage time, manage um, either a supervisor and be able to carve out time to be able to accomplish the degree. So it definitely is very doable. It comes with a lot of um, organizing and being useful of your time and being mindful of your time. Um, but always remember that, that there are others who um, were in a similar spot and similar uh, demands on their lives and they were able to accomplish it. And Melissa, you and your team do such an amazing job finding some pretty, pretty impressive students. And most of our students are already persistent individuals as well. Um, and so you're, they're able to figure out how to get it done. And I'll just be brief, funny story. So a student who just graduated, he's a physician. He came by yesterday, the office. And I saw him, I'm like, hey, so good to see you. What are you doing now with all your free time? He's, free time? I don't have any free time. You all taught me how to use my time. So now I'm doing this and this and this. And so his life is just as, as full as if he were a full-time student again. But it was just great to to see him and have him come back. So we have physicians, consultants, C-level people that are coming back to school, all types of individuals in the program. And uh, it's it's doable. Yeah. I think what's always interesting to me is as we talk to those very recent alums, a lot of them are surprised at a, how efficient they really become and what great managers of the calendars they become, but also how quickly the program goes by. And yes. that, you know, on when before you start, it feels like such a giant commitment. And by the time you end, you're like, can I take one more class? Could I, can I just <laughs> sneak in one more um, semester? So um I'll let you, Jackie, take Dave's question, which is around the duration of the program and kind of 
can you take a break? What kind of, hmm. how should I think about that? Yes. So the program is actually 18 months um, to be exact. So you start in August. Now keep in mind there are different um, recess opportunities or winter break. We have um, a break between the spring semester and the summer semester. So you do get time to breathe and relax and, and just have a moment to refresh. And we always encourage students when we have those breaks, do nothing. Don't think of school, go on a vacation, sit at your house and just binge watch Netflix, do whatever you need to do to refresh your mind. But we do have those breaks built into the program. Um, in looking at the, the time, we do run through the summer. So you start in that August, go through the fall, have a winter break, come back for spring, have a break, and then you are in class that summer. But once you get into your electives, you really have a lot of control over your schedule. And so we'll encourage students, look at how you want to pace out your time within the program. So some students will say, it's summer, I want to spend some more time with my family, I'm gonna take pure classes and that's perfectly fine. And our advisors will help you map that out to make sure that you balance what do you need to take, how many classes you should take or not to make sure that you will always be prepared to graduate on time. We do have um, occasions and I would say it's, it's, more, it's more rare versus the norm where some students will take a semester off. And it could be because of work-related concerns. Sometimes it could be taking care of an elderly parent, something like that. Um, and so it is built into the program where if you need to take a semester off, you can do that. Um, and in some cases still graduate on time. So the advisors will always work with um, an individual to map out the needs and desires, but then also how do you need to manage personal activities um, within your life? Um, Jackie, there's another question about um, choosing a format. So on the application, we will ask you to indicate a preference of format. Um, really, you have a lot of flexibility to change that up until onboarding begins. Usually about a week or two before onboarding, we'll, we'll ask, is this your final answer? Um, and that kind of locks you in to the delivery format. Jackie, can you talk a little bit about the ability to switch between formats once you have started the program? Yeah, so once you've started the program, once the semester starts, you have to stick with the format you've selected. However, let's say you start in the on-campus format and you live in Atlanta, but then now you've gotten this new job and you're moving. And so you'd like to switch to hybrid or even fully online. We can switch delivery formats as long as we switch in between semesters. And this happens um, not all the time, but definitely enough for us to be prepared to manage this. But we have had students um, get different job opportunities and so they need to move. Or we've had um, the opposite where students started fully online or hybrid and then move to Atlanta and then switch to on campus. So we do have that flexibility built in place. Um, definitely we see the trend where more students actually switch from on campus to hybrid or hybrid to online because once they've gotten to the rhythm of now being a student, being back in school, they know how it works. They find that they want a little bit more flexibility, and that is um, just offered when you go fully online or even hybrid for that um, matter. So we do have the option to switch as long as we switch in between semesters. So kind of continuing on this um, vein of flexibility, what happens if you have to miss a week of class? Yes, yeah, so all of our classes are recorded and available for review if you have to miss a class. So if you have to miss, what happens is the student notifies the professor as well as our program office so that we can just have an understanding of why the person needs to miss and that everything's okay. Um, and then the professor will typically say, understood, please watch the recording, follow up with your team if there are any activities or things that you need to be aware of. 
And students are also really good, even within their teams, looking out for other team members and providing that support. So yes, this, this happens and we're um, flexible when it needs to happen. Now there is definitely that tipping point where you can't miss too many classes because obviously we have participation components and we need students to be engaged. So we wouldn't want it to get um, too far out of control without at least having a conversation to understand, are there other things we can do to provide support? But yes, things come up, things happen, people get sick, people have board meetings, all different types of activities, and we can work with our students on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't underscore enough how supportive Jackie and her team are of students being successful in the program and how invested our faculty in. Our students, not just in the classroom, but in life in general, one of the things that I've been so impressed with at Guizueta, and I've been here three years now, is just the level of engagement that the faculty have. And some of that is a product of the school's commitment to a small by design program. So this program, um, it was asked earlier, but there's between 60 and 80 students across the three formats in any given year. That is a number that is incredibly manageable for the faculty to get to know the students and to understand where you are in your career, to help connect you to their network, to involve you in some of the outside projects that they work in. Um, you know, it's just, it's such a, when we say community, it really feels like that. And it does feel like um, for students, I think that translates into feeling supported throughout the process. And whether that's you get very busy at work, you get a promotion and you're like, yay, I got promoted, but oh, now I have to learn this new role or I have all these new responsibilities. Um, family situations, we have students get married and have babies and get divorced. And like, we see it all. Jackie sees it up close and personal, um, all these different things that can happen. But it is really, um, it's really special to be a part of a community during this part of your life. Um, you know, as you go through life, when you're in college, you have all this energy around the people who are around you. And as you go through your career, it kind of comes and goes and to re-enter a situation where everyone is working together towards a goal that's kind of ambitious and you're going through the experience together and you're working in teams, that camaraderie that gets built and that network that gets developed is really special. And so, you know, I think it's, this is a great, this is one of my favorite programs because of the caliber mm -hmm. of students and because of how they do connect in the really special ways. Um, Jackie, we have about 10 minutes left. What have we not touched on? Or Susan, is there something that you can think of that we haven't, or anyone out there, if you have a question, let us know. I Jackie, did think I, of would, I would like for you to talk about the global experiences, because I yeah. think one of the joys of going back to school is you get to be a student again, and you get to go on some really amazing field trips. So can you talk about the global business practice? Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so and I don't know how I could have forgotten that one because we are actually headed to South Africa in April because we all traveled together as a cohort across all delivery formats. Um, and we're headed to South Africa in April. But yes, we have a class that's called Global Business Practices. And this is where we have a professor who talks about doing business in a specific region of the world. And the faculty member they are the ones that come up with the particular region for this um, for your class. And so learn a lot about that particular economy, organizational structures, how you're doing business in that region, but then also look at globally if you're trying to grow your company or even your brand, how do you do that across different cultural um, components that you have to consider and even societal concerns. And after we go through these classes, we then travel to that location uh, within the world. And so in the past, uh, we've gone to Barcelona, Portugal, we've had students go to Asia prior to the pandemic and different parts of Europe. And if you can imagine traveling with 60 plus people, it's a very interesting experience and you learn a lot about individuals and how they travel, how they are outside of the country. It's, a, it's just a lot of fun and you, 
really get to build some strong relationships when you travel together as a cohort. And so that is something that uh, definitely our executive students have the opportunity to do. It's um, such a unique experience and we do allow for our students to bring guests if desired. So oftentimes students will bring a spouse or a partner or a close friend. Um, and so we get to, to see them and meet them and spend time with them also. And the other thing I wanted to mention um, was that in the summer, we have a, another immersion that we, called, we call executive skills. And during this time, we come together and it's, um, it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So include in that are your classes. So it's, it's a class weekend, but we tack on uh, that Thursday to get in more class content. But it's, it's a time where students really get to look at themselves as an executive. Are you putting out the executive presence that you may think you are? Or are there things that you could improve upon so that individuals who are looking to hire for certain roles see you as that future leader? And we have an activity where students come in and they're in full business attire and they're giving presentations and they're recorded. And these team of coaches really help our students in elevating their executive skills and presence. And that is one activity where students have constantly come up to me saying, I wish I had had this five years ago or earlier in my career. There's so many things I would have done differently or at least been more mindful of in the way I'm presenting myself to others. And so we have that component as well as our diversity and inclusion uh, session where students really talk about DEI in the workplace and how do you handle that as a leader, as a manager? Um, are there unconscious bias that you have that you have to be sensitive to when you're working with others? And so literally we get to have all these conversations within a safe space. And so it's a time where people can say, hey, I thought this and I shouldn't have, or I didn't think this and I wish I had. And so it's, again, I, I really strongly believe, and I've seen this with our students, is you need to have safe communities where you can talk about your own personal challenges and work through things together with a support system that's not going to judge you or hold you accountable for whatever it is that you may be struggling with. And then collectively, we're all looking to grow. And so that definitely is another um, activity that has just really been a remarkable experience for all of our executive students. Let's see, for, can the fully online cohort attend via live stream? So it's funny you, you mentioned that. Actually, during COVID, we all attended during a live stream um, visit to different, we actually went to Germany for that for, um, experience. So what happens for a student who is unable to travel? And this is for any delivery. So you may be an on-campus student who's unable to travel. So what the professor will do is you still will participate in all of the classes together. And then if you're not able to travel, then what the faculty member will do is come up with an alternative activity or assignment or partner you with another professor where you could do some sort of an independent study. So we definitely have um, an alternative option for students who are unable to travel. Jackie, I think um, as we wrap up, let me cover a few housekeeping items related to admission. Um, our next application deadline for the executive MBA program is April 12th. So you have a lot of time to work on getting your family used to the idea, getting your company used to the idea, um, putting some thoughtful effort into the application. For this program, we do ask you to interview before you submit your application. And we have interview slots available um, throughout the year, all the time. If you can't find a slot that works for your schedule, just reach out to our office and we're happy to coordinate something for you. Um, decisions for that April 12th come out um, about a month after that. I don't have the date right in front of me, but that's what you can expect. If you want to go ahead and apply now and you have a reason, maybe your company offers sponsorship and you need to have a decision sooner, again, just let us know. 
Um, for the interview, it is really an opportunity for a member of the admissions committee to get to know you better. There's only so many things that you can fit into a paper app. It's not even paper, it's virtual. Um, there's only so much you can fit into an application. And so the interview really gives us a chance to hear in your own words about what you have been doing to this point what you hope to do after school and why you think this is a good time for you to come to school and why specifically Boys Wada is the right school for you. So that's my kind of a long version of a tip is be able to articulate that, be able to articulate your journey and how Boys Wada comes into that. Um, in regard to your letters of recommendation, we do ask for two. It's best if it is someone who has directly supervised you for at least one of them. And then for the other, you can really choose either a colleague who's worked closely with you and has seen you engage in teams. If you're really active in a community organization, sometimes someone from that can write a good recommendation. What the committee is hoping to get out of the letters of recommendation is another person's viewpoint on how you do in your career and insights into your leadership abilities and your abilities to work on teams. I'm happy to, myself or other members of the admissions team, happy to help you with answering those questions. We do, in addition to um, these coffee chats, we do offer some opportunities to engage with admissions to have kind of practical, tactical questions answered. You can find those on our website. Ask Admissions Anything is kind of an open forum where you can just log in, ask whatever you need to ask, and then duck out. Or you can also send up, set up individual time with our um, admissions counselors. We do offer scholarships for the Executive MBA program, and your application for admission is also your application for scholarships. You'll want to make sure you include all the highlights of your career and reasons to believe that you're a good student. The executive MBA scholarship levels are very different from our full-time MBA scholarship levels, but we do offer them. Once all of our applications have been reviewed for admission, the candidates who are offered admission are reviewed another time to determine any scholarship that will be offered. All of our scholarships are merit-based, so we don't offer need-based scholarships. Um, again, if you want more information on that, we're happy to get into the, the nitty-gritty on that with you um, in a phone call or through email. Susan's going to go ahead and put our email into the chat. And just as we're wrapping this up in our last minute, Jackie, any your top piece of advice for people thinking about doing this? Oh, my advice is go for it. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I had the funniest conversation with one of our students and he's actually a, an older gentleman and um, he's a doctor, anesthesiologist, and he's always wanted to start his own company. And I just said, do I need to push you off the cliff or what is it you need me to do? What are we waiting for? Life is too short. You need to go for it. So that's really my advice. And definitely with it being the start of a new year, be energized, put your goals in front of you and go ahead and attack them straight on. Life is short. Let's, let's get at it. And we will give you all the support you need to get it done. So that would be my advice, especially with it being January of 2023. Go for it. Go for it. I love it. Please keep in mind the admissions team is your team and we're always happy to help. So feel free to reach out to any of us on the emails that are in the chat or via LinkedIn. Um, we really would love to see your application and look forward to having you join the Goizueta community. So thank you very much for joining us for this little chat over the noon hour and we will see you again soon. Take care. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you. Ha, 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 ha.